Good morning, everybody. Hello, Alka. Hello, Daya, sir. Am I audible? Dr. Yes. Singh, am I audible? Good morning, Daya, sir. Good morning, Daya, sir. Good morning. Hello, Namaste. Hello, Namaste. Good morning, sir. It's a wonderful morning, a cool December morning here in Barampur. How is it in Sri Lanka, sir? Sri Lanka is not as cool, but uh, anyway, it's nice December weather. Yeah. <laughs> And how is my ma? Ah, she's good. Happy Humans Day, madam. Happy Human Rights Day to everybody. Ah, wish you all a happy Human Rights Day. Yes. Human Rights Day today is on the day. On the day is on the day. On the day is on the day. I mean, everybody you are part of. And happy, happy Human Rights Day, and a lot of apologies to people, Sinhali people in Sri Lanka from India. Dayasar is there from Sri Lanka and human rights are very important for Indians and Sri Lankans and at the moment in Myanmar. In Myanmar, uh, yesterday they were like, they killed 11 people, they burned them alive. So that is a very, very sad day for Human Rights Day. And you know what is happening in Afghanistan, we know whatever is happening everywhere. Yes, sir, I agree with you. Daya, sir, has written that it should be Human Rights and Duties Day, not just remembering human rights, but also understanding what duty we have and towards our fellow men and to, to preserve the rights of everybody. Only then our planet will be a happy planet and we can sustain ourselves and give our forthcoming generations a good life, a good planet. I would like to request, till Alka ma'am uh, comes online, I would like to request uh, um, uh, Daya sir, Okay, um, Sri Daya Desanayake, who has joined us from Sri Lanka, to speak just a few words on human rights and duties, and as he sees it in Sri Lanka and Indian context, or maybe the global context, until um, Alka Man joins. I think Alka Man has joined. Um, something is wrong with her video, so I would request. Daya sir, over to you Daya Desanayake sir, uh, could you please speak a few words on human rights and duties. Our students, uh, our new students would like to listen to you and I see Professor R.P. is that R.P. Singh? Welcome sir. Welcome to this distinguished lecture series that is happening today from in, uh, in the auspices of the Human Rights Day. Daya sir, could you speak? Can you hear me, Daya sir? Hello, good morning. Can you good hear morning. me? Good morning, sir. Okay. Good morning, morning sir. Right. Good, good morning, morning, sir. Uh, and as Dr. Shruti asked, human rights is something that uh, we won't have to talk about if we on a whole life on earth, not only human, but all life on earth, if we can uh, show our responsibilities and our duties towards life on earth, then we don't have to talk about human rights. And human rights anyway is a concept with, uh, which came with the Anthropocene as we discussed at a conference two years ago at uh, Berampur University. So, in South Asia, in our way of life, I think we already have uh, realized and we already practiced to some extent our obligations and our duties 
to accept good years. So, unfortunately, it's politics and so-called democracy which has prevented us from enjoying our uh, duties and lives because now uh, things have been so distorted that uh, most of us don't realize our responsibilities. And uh, that is because we are learning from our politicians because they have only responsibilities for their well-being and for their rights. So that is unfortunately why all this is happening. And a very good example is the misuse of ICCPR to harass writers around the world, especially in our part of the world. So I think today's a speed presentation would be of very interest. That's why I joined today when Dr. Mm. Shruti sent me the invitation. So looking forward to hear uh, the presentation today from Professor Alka. Introducing Dr. Alka Sin, who is official in charge and faculty, faculty and official in charge, international student advisor of the Office of International Affairs, Dr. Ram Manohar Lohia, National Law University, Lucknow. She has been a faculty advisor to the select, selected team. Uh, she has selected team of scholars from Ram Manohar Lohia, National uh, Law University, Lucknow, that procured prestigious United Nations Millennium Fellowship in 2021. Her book, Colors of Blood, is a globally acknowledged uh, work of art and expressions on women, health issues, and menstruation with special reference to sustainable development, published and released via United Nations Millennium Campus Network and Global Academic Impact. Dr. Singh is the media spokesperson, Dr. Ram Manohar Lohia National Law University, Lucknow. She is the recipient of 24 awards honored, including recent Mission Shakti State Award, 2021 from Government of Uttar Pradesh and Samman Patra for exceptionally contributing to National Education Policy 2020, academics, women's schools, and creative writing. Welcome you to the same. We welcome you, Dr. Singh, and um, our and guests, and all the participants here are eager to listen to such a wonderful personality, such a versatile personality, and a person erudite in law and literature taken together along with international um, affairs. So over to you, Dr. Singh. We are all eager to listen to a wonderful topic that you have chosen and likely for this occasion and this day. We welcome you, Barampur University, Department of English, on behalf of Barampur University, its faculty, its administration, and the government of Odisha welcomes you. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Das, and greetings extended from Dr. Ram Nohaloya National Law University to the esteemed uh, scholars, participants. Uh, Professor Daya, and of course, uh, all uh, colleagues at PG Department English, uh, Bahrampur University, Odisha, and thank you for so generously introducing me. It is indeed a pleasure to be among all of you uh, to deliberate, of course, on certain important perspective that we uh, you know, feel like uh, relating out of the perspective uh, from the all encompassing discipline that we call literature with several issues and perspective on human rights, uh, extending very warm wishes again on International Human Rights Day. And I'm so sorry and uh, you know, feel like apologetic uh, since there were technical issues in the beginning. I tried to check it and sort it out. They Technicalities and uh, the the webcam uh, the this webcam of the system says that there was some setting problem and I'm so sorry that we could begin a little late but nevertheless it is uh, indeed a pleasure to begin and uh, be uh, you know if, uh, 
to connected with you all and let's stay connected to deliberate on certain important perspectives that relate law and literature and when we talk about a visual text when we talk about literature the different genres its forms of writing and the representation that we have as part of uh, you know um, politicized affairs of uh, economy politics uh, gerontology uh, human values and so many important perspectives that always speak high volumes when they are studies under the ambit of law and literature so thank you once again and let's uh, begin talking about certain important proposition that i would like to uh, first uh, uh, keep uh, before you uh, you know when uh, this is simply a very important question when we uh, when we try to understand that what kind of propositions we have to discuss under law and literature so let me first clarify some important perspective to help the scholars, the students specifically, to understand this uh, fertile area, this fertile, you know, um, uh, background and the consciousness of so much of culture that relates, uh, you know, uh, widely and visibly with a lot of intricate bond that exists between law and literature. So, first of all, uh, let me let me uh, you know uh, let me give you a background. Uh, or, or I would rather say the 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 extremely you know um, is extremely underlying a few important propositions uh, that relate law and literature. For instance, the presentation of uh, legal subject matter in literature. One thing. Another, the interpretation of legal text. The interpretation of legal text by the methods or by or via, uh, I would say, hermeneutical process as part of teaching and research pedagogy, as part of understanding of literary criticism, as part of understanding of legal criticism in the interpretation of the text or the legal text. And another important proposition that I would like to uh, share with the uh, with the galaxy of scholars and the students from Bahrampur University, Odisha, that the use of literature, you see, the use of literature, the plethora of ideas and the thoughts that relate us uh, to the understanding of the human condition, the human consciousness, the culture that we have, you know, uh, where we utilize literature to improve judicial opinion. And then again, it is important, you see, to understand that, that, that you see, uh, that the development of law and literature, you know, can be, can be uh, recasted every time to understand the ontological um, uh, assumptions and the terms uh, that relate, uh, that relate us to understand the social being of law, you know, that depends in large measure upon poetic, dramatic, fictional, and other imaginary forms of, uh, I would say, social presence, and in endeavoring to comprehend and analyze, you know, these uh, vast uh, uh, literary culture, this <clears throat> vast popular culture, are the stories of uh, law as a social being, uh, it is uh, it is appropriate to speak that law and literature has sought <coughs> has sought a kind of a relation, as Richard Posner says, that can always be argued and re-argued. <coughs> Sorry, to uh, to relate the depiction of uh, professional practices. Uh, 
the practices in the law courts to be virtues and vices of lifestyles and judgment that they they you know relate or imply so <clears throat> I would say that you know the scholarly intervention, the uh, the understanding of law and literature, <coughs> uh, that that you know this have been a, a kind of a study at its best to uh, you know to to gorge and to uh, peep into the recuperating role of. Uh, imagination in the exercise of law uh, you know this offers among so many other things that we know that literature does to human society there is a series of uh, depiction of uh, virtues and the narrative ethics uh, stories of the good life and so much or uh, so much that define uh, human conditions uh, you know conclusions to the problems uh, uh, as part of the major and minor narratives that we have uh, you know to uh, in in understanding the relationship of law with literature that share domains of ethics and aesthetics also so you know here we have so much to offer as glimpses not only of nomos and narrative of justice and injustice in the social relations imposed by law, but it also offers an occasion you know, for lawyers to acknowledge and respect the voices uh, that we hear. Now, one, uh, one important thing, I'm sure the uh, participants would agree with me, that you see, law tells the stories just as the stories are told about law. So there, there exists an important, you know, relationship that always can be, uh, that can be argued between law and literature, you know, uh, when we talk about the description of the creativity uh, or, or creative scripts uh, in different forms of uh, writings as part of the real legal events as part of the trials and as part of the occasional, you know, uh, occasional uh, uh, designed plans and projects to illuminate legal problems. And also, you, you see, whether literature or law, they, they embody, you know, they, they embody uh, the the human conditions, the the human uh, values, the conditioning of the individual behind the uh, behind enterprise to economic activities to political activities to social order to the sociology of the society where we can see that you know they uh, you know there are many uh, many. Uh, Questions uh, uh, that determine redeeming social values, uh, 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 or or you know, or replicating every time uh, so much uh, hidden motives uh, and and the politics in literature that again and again inform to help us evaluate that how, you know, how literature contains a surprising amount of legal subject matters. And therefore, you see, for example, you see, uh, the the text like the Merchant of Venice, uh, Billy Bird, uh, Law a Stranger, and you see the focus in Bleak House and James uh, uh, James, uh, uh, James. Just give me a second, please. Hello, I'm the lecture. So. Uh, I, I just wanted to, uh, you know, uh, speak that, uh, that we, we know that there is a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, human 
human values, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, how, how an individual is, con is conditioned in, in one's brain, uh, you know, to understand the, the, uh, the role that one can always contribute in understanding the establishments and the narratives that we have in the society. Now, the important thing is that you, you see, uh, even the language even that even the language of a poem or the language that we have in, uh, in, in different forms of uh, literature can speak and inform us of a lot that we can always relate to uh, law and literature. For instance, you see, you know, before taking up some of the visual text, some of the um, exemplary visual text, we can uh, we can. Um, uh, talk about, uh, for instance, uh, uh, let me let me just narrate one poem bef uh, uh, before the house over here, and I'm sure you must have already heard of it and read uh, it. We have uh, you know so much of the stuff that we can always surf uh, on the net when it comes uh, to understand you know these new emerging. Uh, um, or, or I would not say new emerging uh, uh, disciplines, but I would say because uh, when we trace the relationship between law and literature, it is somewhere around 1973 when James Boyd White uh, you know, re-argued uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the way the, uh, the American jurisprudence, uh, uh, the uh, legal uh, schools uh, that have, uh, you know, that have ransacking you know, literature and humanities uh, for, uh, for understanding the relation between law and literature. And there have been a lot of squint vision because, of course, uh, literature cannot uh, you know, mechanically play a role in understanding the, the statutes, uh, the codes that we have. But one thing is very important to understand that what literature does is somewhere uh, similar to what law does, uh, you know, uh, so far as interpretation to, uh, to disseminate justice in the society is concerned. For example, a person or a scholar or student of literature would be interpreting a text to understand, you know, understand the, uh, the consciousness of, uh, you know, uh, the, the consciousness of how to, how to cater to the psychology of, uh, of, uh, of understanding of correct or incorrect or something that we call wrong or not so wrong. And the another important thing is that <clears throat> the, these laws, uh, these laws have emerged out of the, you know, uh, out of the humanities, out of the enterprise involved, you know, the activities involved, the thought processes involved, the psychology involved in, uh, in understanding the establishments, the narratives, the stories, that we have and then is shaped into the statutes and codes to regulate the behavior of the human society. So it is actually the, the hum, uh, these, these human values, it is actually the humanities, it is actually the psychology, it is actually the sociology of the human condition that help us to understand that which of these law would be suitable to cater to the problems of the human society or to cater to the problems, emerging problems or the challenges in the society and what kind of laws we should have to cater to the requirements of, uh, uh, of, of a good life, of a good society. For example, you know, uh, recently we have been, uh, we have been looking at, at the kind of the, you know, devastating human condition after, you know, in the past two years, the entire society, the entire world have been, uh, you know, hit uh, with this devastating coronavirus and we all have suffered we all have understood the challenging times and the way to human resilience the way to survive uh, uh, um, uh, with, the, with the circumstances that we had with the, the challenges that we had to face the survival you know as in the darwinians uh, 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 in, 
the Armenians' uh, terms of the protest. <clears throat> And, and we see, we have seen that there have been these, uh, you know, there have been these, uh, uh, these concepts, uh, you know, as has been defined by Aristotle, uh, uh, eudaimonia, that is you, which is a good, good and Mon eudaimonia, that is the spirit, good spirit. So it is the good spirit. It is the good. It is the happiness. It is the creativity that help us. You know that that help us sustain with the challenging environment. That has helped us to sustain with the uh, the kind of the you know health beliefs. Uh, so far as its relation to the uh, understanding of culture is required in these challenging times. And so is the accordingly emergence of the norms, the rules, the behavior to regulate the entire society, to master the craftsmanship of, uh, you know, understanding of uh, human resilience in these war times, in these challenging times. Uh, uh, you know, a number of literature, since literature is, an, uh, you see, it is something uh, and, uh, uh, that, that offers a method of criticism, a method of tools, a method of uh, analysis, uh, you know, uh, a method of, a method to, to uh, even put questions on the very assumptions, uh, on the very, you know, on the very, uh, Basic assumptions uh, that we can uh, that we can uh, have as part of teaching and research pedagogies uh, to relate to the domains that we are discussing uh, so far as um, law as literature or or law in literature is concerned, or literature as law is concerned. So there are three dimensions that are open when we talk. About this, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, this intricate bond that exists between law and literature. That is the legal subject matter. You know, the presentation of the legal subject matter. That is law in literature, and then literature as law, as a sector that you find, you know, in this domain or in the different genres of fiction uh, to the placed, uh, you know, to, to be located as part of the society by and large, and literature, one could always argue, uh, uh, you know, presence, uh, um, an image of a beyond of law, a justice that exists like, you know, uh, equity beyond the letter of, uh, of, of, of legal rules. So literary methods, uh, you know, provides uh, subtle, or I would say in, in, in political terms, uh, uh, a, a kind of uh, the you know critical tools for analyzing the felicity, uh, felicity of justice, felicity of uh, so many uh, you know uh, legal speech acts, uh, the ontological sense, the the approximation which is. Uh, close to the eloquence of the imagination and identify the lifestyle and here there is uh, there is a uh, there is a juncture that relates literature as law and it remains uh, you know important to understand that law and literature has had upon you know uh, it, Right, uh, right from 1973, um, if uh, if uh, I remember correctly, as as Gustav Flaubert in Adam uh, Noel, this uh, uh, Flaubert puts that not a lawyer but carries with him a debris of words. So this uh, sentence, perhaps uh, you know, this particular expression, perhaps. Uh, uh, somewhere very appropriately, uh, you see, uh, describes the writer uh, that is inside the uh, you know, framing of, uh, 
inside the framing of uh, of the laws and the statutes the legislation uh, we have that where where we can find that there are a number of uh, you know scholarly insight that that we can always look forward to look for the balancing acts that that can happen between law and literature through the professions through the literary enterprises and there have been a lot of interesting texts in this dimension that i would like to refer for example now you see um, uh, this uh, poem which i wanted to uh, you know share with you and you must have uh, this uh, uh, you must have read many uh, times when we talk of uh, when we talk of the discrimination in the society, especially the racial discrimination. You know, it is it is still prevalent, and we have uh, uh, been reading of such news uh, in the pamphlets and articles uh, even today as a part of this twenty uh, first century development of language and literature that. Uh, open vast vistas of doors and horizons to understand that how literature can cater to the requirements of the you know the the, the legal uh, background consciousness to understand that why do we need such statutes and codes to uh, such such norms rules to regulate uh, the structured society a good society this is a poem by uh, by uh, benjamin zephania where where the poem is titled as Dear White Fella. So Dear White Fella, this is what the poet says, that Dear White Fella, uh, something you should know. When I was born, I black. When I grow up, I black. When I grow up, I black. When I go in sun, I black. When I cold, I black. When I scared, I black. When I mad, I black. When I sick, I black. And when I die, I still black. And you white fella, when you born, you pink. When you grow up, you white. When you go sun, you blue. When you scared, you yellow. When you mad, you red. When you sick, you green. And when you die, you gray. And you have the nerve to call me colored. So that's a beautiful expression, you know. And when you in a little refer to you know, to the analysis of uh, the this movie great debaters great debater is a very good movie you know uh, uh, if you will look at the syllabus in law school this movie uh, been seen to be occupying uh, a, a very celebrating, you know, image among these, among the uh, leg, uh, this uh, legal luminaries, the students of law, and even literature, of course, uh, who find it, uh, you know, uh, who find it a uh, fertile text to understand the voices uh, that uh, can help us to relate and understand that how law and literature is, uh, um, is a beautiful enterprise uh, to communicate, you know, uh, to communicate the kind of the, you know, the, the, the tool, the, the kind of uh, the instrument or the law as a social instrument to change, you know, the, the, to, or to bring out the desired changes in the society that have challenged the, you know, humans and their existence so far as their pains and sufferings have to be seen in broader understanding of the term, as I said, with a reference to the kind of the, you know, life we, have, we talk about, as I said, you know, uh, when we try uh, to uh, understand, uh, uh, you know, uh, understand some of the uh, perspective that that is offered via positive psychology, where 
where we we understand you know, the the value of uh, the good spirit and the good spirit behind the structuralizing uh, a good society so uh, you know this uh, uh, this uh, movie uh, the, this movie great debaters by Akin Kua uh, is a, is a beautiful text that is speak of uh, you know that is speak uh, is speak of uh, of what i would say an, an important expression that and that you know black is beautiful but why it is beautiful too when it helps to change society to make our system work for black people since you know as i as i read before you know the way they this uh, this uh, uh, poetry this uh, poem talk about the racial discrimination so what you know when we when we come across the visual text exemplary visual text like uh, the great debaters as i said they're directed by a king who you see you see here uh, here you know this uh, this the, the racial segregation that that uh, this uh, text portrays this movie portrays uh, racial segregation in a government policy which is a private practice of the individuals and the businesses and even the institutions so what we find here is a professor who is uh, um, is named as Melvin Tolson, and he is a professor who has been who has been shown to work, uh, um, you know, religiously uh, and uh, uh, devotedly to to the to to make and shape the students as a strong, uh, you know, uh, as a strong. Um, uh, ingredients to the uh, to shape the society to shape the nation and we find that uh, the, this uh, professor who is called Melvin Tolson is at a very college who is organizing a debate te team and this team consisted of three boys and a girl and this team you know is working hard and the way we see that how professor Tolson has been training his students and scholars uh, with language nuances, uh, with with uh, you know uh, with the requirements of being sensitive to the usage of the language and the nuances uh, that is often heard out of the the noises out of the uh, you know. Uh, out of uh, understanding of uh, uh, that uh, that uh, that these uh, these trainings, the way you utilize the language, can do uh, miracle to the society, to guide a society or to structure a society. And what we find here, uh, him, you know, working very hard for this team of students who is going to participate in a uh, in a debate competition. And they, uh, although this team is facing a lot of oppositions quarrels, setbacks from the uh, from the uh, from the whites, of course, and 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 among themselves, uh, there there have been a lot of conflict among themselves as well. But this didn't stop them from moving forward, and they had a passion to liberate uh, you know black people from any oppression of the white. And this debate actually this. Uh, particular academic event, this particular extracurricular activity which the college uh, uh, um, had been looking forward, you know, has been utilized as an instrument to, uh, you know, to voice uh, that they want to put forward to the society and they, they uh, uh, it has been shown in the movie that they, uh, they had only a team left to beat to prove their worth to the whole world. World, uh, because we know that some of the genres have been beautifully chosen to represent the establishments, the narratives that we have in the society in it, the in, in miniature, and and they 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 can be seen. This particular uh, team has been seen, uh, you know, to finally be the last team, which was from the Harvard, and uh, you know they defeated uh, the Harvard team at the end of the movie, and Mr. Tolson dream was finally realized what we find in the movie in the very from the very beginning is the setting of uh, you know a setting um, this setting is actually in texas america in 30s and this was the time there when when racism was acute when blacks were considered in 
back as no bodies i mean black were uh, used to work at the farms of the whites we have so much of literature from uh, from canada from can i mean canadian literature australian literature african literature that is speak volumes on the uh, uh, on the problems of racial discrimination but you know the effect that these uh, you know visual text uh, they create uh, they create on the psyche of the people are are i mean uh, exemplary and can be utilized as a teaching resource as part of the research and uh, you know uh, teaching pedagogy where we can have a number of notes uh, to propose that these visual texts can uh, can prove worthy as part of uh, you know academic discussions extension and extracurricular activities uh, uh, to uh, to uh, to cater to the understanding of uh, many uh, um, you know Uh, or, or many dilemmas uh, in the workplaces and similarly what we see here is that you know even even some of the assisting features uh, for example the music uh, uh, and 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 other settings uh, some of the recurring uh, you know understanding of uh, uh, And, and some some recurring understanding of uh, uh, this uh, mm. these uh, mm. literary texts in different uh, manifestation i mean specifically the visual text and the form that it adopts uh, to stand for teaching uh, you know laws and communication or communicate human values and the structuring of the various systems in the society that helps an individual to understand rights and rules to live and occupy space with dignity that is what we talk about we 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 see we, we are celebrating international human rights day and we know that this day marks the significance of the adoption of uh, uh, this united declarations of human rights uh, that is udhr and the foremost and important thing about the document is the space that uh, that a human being enjoys as a right uh, you know as a right of being born as a human and so to live uh, uh, with uh, with a you know with a space that is dignified and that is uh, free from any kind of uh, you know stereotype uh, or stigmatic uh, you know uh, may, uh, is were problems and challenges uh, where you know where a series you know that there, there there are a series of literary text the visual text in broader sense of the term and that pertains to a large number of you know films and the visuals that beautifully actually communicate the meaning of the expressions in the form of the codes and the statutes for bringing about criticism and sustenance to life so these films and visuals uh, you know they they stand exemplary in educating the stakeholders students in general and legal professionals say you know in particular to understand uh, and interpret uh, the laws that emerge from human society and uh, where were rights uh, you know rights associated with the birth of being a human that becomes remarkably a priority above all laws as life is the greatest gift of god and the power of communication that exists in these visual text is understood you know therapeutically because they attack the psyche they uh, you know they, they straight go to the heart of the people the the the, the visuals speak high of uh, you know uh, realizations and through this realization uh, you know uh, it has a critical role in that can establish laws for structuring human society and not humans as uh, so as to say to go for the stringent laws you know human child you see is born with a competent brain to evaluate enough of the variables that satisfies him or her for a good living if not better so the priorities uh, 
and the choices that one makes up to defend his uh, rights to live with dignity is deeply realized and the uh, heart of the audience uh, you know you see uh, it coincides to make an agreement uh, with the with, with the same in a forceful manner through the portrayal of such a visual text and can be used as a tool to teach and educate people regarding the issues that structuralizes the existing system in general and laws in particular in our society. You see this, uh, 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 you know, it is needless to say that the world of cinema is often a true reflection of human life with all its emotions and, and gestures and the behavioral patterns and it, uh, it, uh, it actually shows a complete society in miniature and it prepares a base for a unique kind of uh, visual language that is, speaks very high affecting the mind of the receptors directly and in a way uh, you see, no mental filter is actually required to receive the message as intended and portrayed to a particular form of uh, the text. And when we talk about the literature, you see, um, uh, you know, uh, when it is uh, when we 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 come across, uh, uh, you know, in its uh, in its visual form, uh, uh, this uh, this uh, I would say that uh, you know that. Uh, there is, a, you know, it directs the action of the audience, actions of the receptors, uh, the uh, the uh, you know, the kind of the enterprise you are involved into, it. and every every visual culture, every visual text as part of this uh, visual culture, because that is why perhaps in this age, which is actually dominated, uh, you know, by the visual mm -hmm. culture now, that the scholars, teachers. They have started recognizing the value of film, the value of cinema as a teaching resource, as part of teaching and research pedagogy uh, that can discuss a number of uh, you know purposes uh, in the form of uh, or in different forms of literature, where there is an open space uh, to the audience to react upon, you know, without making any kind of uh, uh, any kind of delay in interpreting the uh, substructure of ideas which is portrayed in the form of fiction, non-fiction, or any other form of literature. In fact, as I said, that the assisting scenario of any film, for instance, you know, its backdrop with reference to light, landscape, symbolic features, music, and other related settings, that also directs and adds an additional meaning to the interpretation process attempted by an audience or individual you know who is involved in rating in understanding in interpreting the cinematic feature the cinema or the film as a plethora of uh, you see working ideas and behavioral patterns that consciously or unconsciously i would say become the part and parcel of uh, you know the psyche and it can bring a momentum of good and both, uh, good and bad, both of course, and can correct or, or or can be incorrect. It can judge or perhaps define, or or sometimes uh, you know it can match or betray the emotions of humankind, of course, and sometimes uh, you know. Um, uh, uh, we uh, we can we can of course analyze uh, the human society the the audience the stakeholders the scholars uh, and cross into so many activities uh, fails to register with uh, you know uh, with register with oneself <laughs> the roles that utterly need our attention for a better survival and a better society and we cannot guarantee that suffering bore by the other person you know in front will never become the part of our lot you know in other in other words what is happening with one person say for example in the cinematic feature 
picture in the cinema, in the, uh, in the visual text that we are watching, you know, say some, some wrong is happening with, with the person in front, we all will realize that the same can otherwise, uh, you know, uh, possibly uh, can happen uh, with us as well. So, you know, it shows us the patterns the, that remain, you know, that remain important to be sensitive towards such wrongs that ail our society as it would become the you know ailment for the masses uh, you know uh, that uh, and, and can of course uh, the, you know can prove worthy of uh, studying as part of the case studies and uh, so for example we, let me let me briefly discuss with you the case study of uh, of a Hollywood film Philadelphia uh, by you know it's, it's a film by Jonathan Temis and in uh, somewhere around 1993 it was produced and this brings uh, to us the reflection of one such society which can be seen you know as having narrow scape from the trivials and tribulations that life inflicts upon you know the, upon the entire society when we say is here uh, well, um, an environment where where a lot of professionals are involved working to you know working to towards uh, better uh, uh, better the towards the betterment of the society and you know if we find here in in in, in Jonathan Demi's uh, uh, Philadelphia um, you know the protagonist. Andrew, who is an outstanding lawyer, you see, doing immensely good in his life, life of the self, he's doing immensely good for others, he's an outstanding lawyer, uh, you know, catering to the requirements of uh, the sufferers, the poor, the people who need, uh, you know, a, a lawyer like him to, uh, you know, to uh, challenge the problems of the society. Um, you know, it has been shown in this particular movie that uh, you know, uh, someday being exposed as a homosexual AIDS patient. And it is also a fact that with reference to the society concern, you know, that, uh, that if, uh, if, uh, if, you know, popular perception of AIDS mainly reflects the realities of the epidemic, uh, recent public opinion data uh, should show a decreased tendency for the American uh, you know, public to think of AIDS primarily in terms of homosexuality. However, if public reactions to AIDS con you know, to, to, uh, continue to serve such, uh, substantially as symbolic expressions of attitude towards homosexuality, this is what, uh, you know, uh, what has been particularly interpreted as part of the, uh, the the, uh, the backdrop of the this particular movie. So what, what we find over here is Andrew, the protagonist, he faces a society which not only neglects him, but tries every reason to devastate the remainder of his existence. And having felt as a neglected and suffocated person, Andrew bring, uh, he brings forth to us to think on not only the you know rights that a human being possesses and should fight for, but also uh, you see brings to uh, for the case of professional in true sense of the term. And Andrew has been vocal in finding his uh, well built reputation, dignity towards the uh, towards his remaining survival and the portrayal of Andrew's struggle and his stance against the odds of the society is very inspiring actually, especially to the budding lawyers uh, towards making them great in their professions. So, uh, you know, uh, when, we, when we see in the film that Andrew Beckett is uh, show, shown, uh, he is shown as a very, very, very successful lawyer who conceals his sexual orientation and HIV status uh, 
uh, from his senior partners and senior associate, the employers in a uh, in a law firm, which is uh, which in the movie is called as Wint and Wheeler, uh, the law firm where uh, where Andrew, as a lawyer, as a very bright lawyer, has been working uh, there in the firm. And when he was promoted to the position of a senior associate, he is shown to have given a very important case, and that Andrew Beckett somehow found himself infected with HIV virus, and 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 he became a regular visitor to the hospital. And under the supervision of the doctor, he had a desire to keep contributing to legal services that he could serve in the best capacity to the people for whom he finds befitting to bring justice. And he did his best to satisfy his clients and hope to do the same in future too. But then he has always been on the expectations of the law firm, Winton Winter, for which he worked. And at a point of time in his life when he tried to hide his case, his disease, that he got infected with carposy, uh, you know, uh, this uh, this can uh, this uh, AIDS uh, legends of uh, carposy's uh, sarcoma. That is, uh, and and he was exposed immediately as as incompetent in making a preparation for a case whose backup files were also missing for some time, uh, you know, which lately appeared before his case was taken in the court. And Andrew here felt emotionally delayed. So, uh, you know, with the movement of the plot in, in, in uh, not only in this particular ritual text, in this particular movie, which is uh, directed by Jonathan Davis, Philadelphia, uh, you know, what, what we find here is, is an important development which brings, you know, unfortunate effects. So you you get uh, you know you get to know that a document related with this uh, with the case is misfiled at the same time when Kaposi sarcoma legends of an irre uh, irrevocable nature that appears on Andrew's face and because of the misfiling of this case uh, Andrew was accused of incompetence and of becoming a negligent liar. So subsequently he fired from the job and the plotting and you see firing against Andrews can also uh, be a case of homophobia and uh, you know uh, this uh, that means you know uh, this this strong willed Andrew he smelled something fishy and well plotted about the entire story against him as the cause for being uh, you know being fired from the firm and he was somewhere sure that he was fired because of his HIV status because of his sexual orientation and a true uh, you know in a true um, a professional spirit. He goes in search of a lawyer who could take up his case to defend him in winning the uh, in winning his spirit. And finally, he hires Joe Miller, who, who has been shown to be an African American outstanding lawyer uh, in the movies called Ambulance Chaser. So Joe Miller, he represents the Andrew Beckett's case uh, in this uh, particular uh, movie, Philadelphia. And uh, he uh, this he represents Andrew against uh, the firm Wint and Wheeler, and he finds that this discrimination is based on the individual's health situation. So it is important, you know, here to ponder over those laws where you see discriminating behavioral patterns of the society emerge and regulate entire mechanism with this kind of scepter in which innocent individuals are swayed and are completely devastated morally, physically, as is the case uh, um, that we come across so far as Andrew Beckett in the movie uh, by, by Jonathan Demi's uh, Philadelphia is concerned. So on this pretext, uh, you know, it is shown that the partners um, 
that at the firm uh, Lynch and Wheeler, they justify their action of filing an extremely well-gaining professional and you back it. However, one can always argue, you know, that filing, uh, filing and you, uh, you know, and you uh, because of his sexual orientation and because of the, uh, because of his age sickness would perhaps <coughs> prevent unnecessary, you know, grapevine stories and unhealthy time pass talks that might, of course, hamper the growth of any uh, institution. And therefore, the mass progress of the firm would, would not be, of course, hampered if once, you know, that individual is, uh, is, uh, is fired. But on the other hand, the space of the individual is victimized, you see, for the reasons uncontrollable for him. So, and you could realize that the firm's decision to fire him all of a sudden on fake charges of he being a negligent job professional was a kind of a you know a blunt blow to his entire legal services that he extended to the firm and the people concerned. So Andrew somewhere had a clue that since his partners at the firm were aware of his sexual orientation and later on used his ailment, you know, the particular kind of a pretext to fire him off this position, which instigated his litigating metal that he actually has a very strong case to represent him in the court of law. And that is the procedure adopted by the partners at the firm itself uh, was a law firm and, and which was enough for a brilliant lawyer like him to be emotionally challenged. So for him, it was beyond the scope of business uh, and professional ethics to understand this kind of division, uh, you know, this kind of uh, decision and discrimination. So this trope again, you know, opens before the audience, before the scholars, before the students uh, that 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 scope of you know misunderstood uh, misunderstood hidden motives of the uh, uh, you know of the partners at the Wint and Wheeler in discussing the case of Beckett's Andrew Beckett's uh, uh, you know ailment and his sexual orientation frankly with him why the partners did not find fit to discuss the case of uh, you know Andrew Beckett's deadly ailment and its future consequences uh, to his physical physical and emotional health, even though they being his good friends, this is what we, you know, what we find in some of the beautiful scenes in this particular movie. And uh, you see, um, uh, it is important to understand that, you know, that, uh, uh, that this, uh, this Andrew's emotional side of the case in the realization to accept, you know, uh, separation from the firm, leaving him with the scope of understanding his case as a separate individual who should opt for an alternate space to lead his further life. And Andrew, you know, see, as audience we have observed, we, we can see, we can read in this text uh, as a compassionate and understanding, rational and extremely talented and educated fellow. So had he been given a chance for a fair talk, you know, for a fair deal, for a frank opinion of discussion, the entire scene might have been observed differently. So in view of the collective wellness of the society, it may be argued that each mini narrative is significant and proves, you know, contributory in regulating the social setup of society. So laws, statutes, codes, just procedures, they have a you know pivotal role in structuring the society, and the legislations should have. A, you know, the, the legislation should have their implications uh, in furthering a society towards a humanity and popularizing civilized culture for a harmonious and a peaceful coexistence of the system and for the system. <coughs> Else there would not be, you know, 
its long-lasting identity and it would be loosened with the mainstream system in a short span of time. So laws are for the people and, you know, for their sustainable growth and for their development. Moreover, you see, its foregrounding on which it is based is also to be checked uh, you know, time and again to meet the emergent situations or situations of society. So in case of uh, this particular visual text, in this, this particular case, Philadelphia, we, you see, we come across a, a society where there is one law for one individual, and, the, and for the masses working in the same environment, it is the other perspective of the law that can be looked into. So this paradox, you know, this dichotomy is visible everywhere. And, and uh, 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 when we look at the, you know, this particular discipline, the syllabi that we have as part of the Department of uh, Literature, Languages, and even the curriculum and the syllabi uh, that we have in the law school, you know, it, it can be restructured in terms of the projects that can, you know, that can um, that can bring more dynamism to uh, to these mono disciplines if we take uh, if we take this particular uh, you know this particular view this particular perspective the humanities and its uh, conditioning its reading its understanding in relation to law in structuring the teaching trends and communication so far as the you know so far as the understanding and interpreting the statutes code and laws in our society to justify the inclusion in fact of of of, of such a visual text and their connotations that we can always hear uh, which is in fact a far-reaching impact in creating a vision that longs for a harmonious society, peaceful society, uh, where fair justice shall prevail. And this attempt, uh, you know, this, this, these, uh, these, uh, these uh, attempts uh, at, at reading a visual text, uh, therefore, uh, you know, I feel... Uh, they, they offer immense scope of not only understanding the statutes, <laughs> codes, rules, norms, and the behavioral stance that we people take to get to the requirements of the you know people under you know under different uh, sufferings and pains, but it also therapeutically, you know, treats human psyche, heart and mind to read between the lines, the gap that is uh, needed to be bridged for a harmonious society with values and you know visual texts, media and film studies, uh, they can help us to understand the of exemplary and uh, uh, I would say uh, illustrative cultural and popular ingredients decoding theoretical knowledge as evident practices prevalent in our society. So far as higher education is concerned, it can opt to include such reading materials, such as stuffs in the curriculum for not less than, you know, translating difficult ideas in everyday terms for, for, for suggesting lawmakers or policy makers to evaluate rationality and the reasonableness, you know, uh, behind the courts and the statutes that are there for governing a society of diverse scholars and yet united so far as you know our own nation is concerned so you know particularly when when i when i uh, saw this uh, this particular movie i could feel that uh, you know this uh, uh, this uh, jonathan demi's philadelphia centers on the <coughs> trials and on the relationship that develops between Andrew Lawyer, Joe Miller, who finally found it befitting 
to represent the case of Andrew Beckett in, in the Honorable Court of Law. Uh, so, you know, these, uh, these kind of the visual text that deals with so much of the problems in the society, sometimes uh, they, 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 you know, they are, they are exemplary in understanding the ethical dilemma, you know, confronted uh, by, by the human society. And it is sometimes also important to understand, you know, the reasons or, or, or you know, uh, how sometimes a system or an establishment uh, uh, falls into a fallacious reasoning to experience and to to uh, give momentum to the understanding of the challenges and problems that ail our society and it is it is these these uh, texts are exemplary in interpreting the experiences of others and might in turn you know might in turn uh, alter alter our own experiences uh, of of uh, of uh, uh, you know of believing or not believing these experiences says so there are many uh, you know many important and good texts that have always uh, you know spoke uh, they, they have always uh, uh, you know spoken of uh, spoken of so much that we can always find in as important background to the studies of uh, this uh, this law and literature movement since 1973 and and uh, some of the some of the important specific uh, you know uh, works in the area, for example, uh, uh, the the moment was initiated by by Richard Posner, Simon Lee, I would say, when he you know there's an interesting article by Simon Lee which is called. Um, uh, this uh, goodbye Austin, hello Austin. So this hello Austin is Jane Austen from Pride and Prejudice, and uh, this uh, uh, that is John Austen from the School of Jurisprudence. So uh, you know uh, every time, every time when a wrong is attempted and when human emotions are betrayed, when when you know there may be several reasons both good and bad for attempting something wrong either by an individual or a group or or by a system and but then it is it is true that they would affect each in turn and they the, the, the thing is that the effect in terms of the material loss of course is often you see recovered with the passage of time but uh, but the effect in terms of the psychological balancing you know that act you know that is something more important to analyze uh, uh, you know when we when we talk about the kind of the act the kind of the enterprise the kind of the skills we need from an individual or a group or a system uh, you know that that can bring more uh, you know, more contribution in structuralizing a society else there are these uh, as uh, you know psychological imbalance can uh, can be devastating you know can be it can devastate and sometimes not only one or two or say a few but many lives are stay, uh, are at a stake so when we look at these visual texts these literature i i you know, we can see that there is a rich storehouse of such exemplary in English literature and their and their representation in different forms of uh, you know literature, cinema, um, and, and other other uh, you know other forms of uh, 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 literature as as we have the you know recent understanding of the music and the the pop culture etc. Where we can see that you know for. Uh, for understanding the relevant issues that correspond to this particular uh, agenda uh, in relation to the law and literature movement, there are certain celebrated classics that can always be, you know, that can always be referred right from, uh, you know, right from the. Uh, uh, 
write from literature that is stretches from the uh, Irish writer Jonathan Swift uh, through William Shakespeare. Um, and you see, you, uh, you know, there is so much to analyze in the form of the, uh, you know, in the form of the the two lawyers like speech. Uh, uh, between the grave diggers, when uh, you know, when Ophelia uh, in the play Hamlet, you know, we see that she uh, uh, she is dead, and there uh, there happens a duel between the uh, the uh, um, uh, you know the main protagonist that is Hamlet and Ophelia's brother Laertes. And you know, and the famous speech uh, that that happens over there is speak volumes on the psyche that you know that can always uh, you know uh, be understood and that can always be interpreted, that can always be argued and re-argued to understand you know the uh, the. Uh, concept of dissemination of justice by a system or by the decision taken by an individual in turn to affect the family and society by and large. So including, you know, some of the classical texts uh, from, uh, from Jonathan Swift through William Shakespeare and Charles Dickens moving on to Camus and then mm -hmm. Kafka, of course, uh, including some of the best, uh, best classical Greek uh, literature from Socrates and Sophocles uh, up to the Russian novelist Dostoevsky, you know, we find a rich heritage. We find a rich heritage that offers us a kind of a critical, you know, and yet rounded picture of law in society. Uh, as I have said, that some of the beautiful works uh, in the area uh, by by Daniel J. Constein, by Richard Posner, by Newsbaum, by uh, by James Boyd White, uh, you know, they have uh, been you know they have been giving a I think a broader insight to look. Good. This uh, uh, this uh, discipline, I would say, which is, which has emerged now as a kind of an autonomous discipline and as a fertile source uh, that explores many fold relations that exist between law and literature. Now, what is a uh, uh, well, uh, you know there have been a lot of claims that this. Uh, have been making in the in the in this uh, particular dimension, you know, and and they they help us to relate the broader uh, you know horizons, and you know they expose our students, uh, the scholars of law and literature, to the so called you know high culture, and the advantage of introducing uh, you know this uh, particular. Uh, movement of law and literature because uh, when we when we uh, talk about uh, uh, you know human rights concerns when we talk about uh, the issues that are uh, you know that are that help us to understand the broader perspective and the the entire UDHR documents so far as human rights concerns are there we find that literature as an all encompassing discipline is replete with such issues. Uh, you know uh, where where we can always uh, uh, peep into the peep into the popular culture that it is speaks of uh, in the way that they can help us to learn and to develop arguments from whatever diverse and familiar is available to us and you know it's, you, you see the changing images of police Criminals, criminal law can be traced to popular culture and the question of law and morals, you know, uh, that can always be answered through the classics of literature. So, or there would perhaps be an answer to these issues in uh, in, in concerns. So this, you know, uh, this vast canon, uh, this uh, from the vast canon of uh, literature, uh, it it is it is suggestive to understand that uh, you know, the Dickens Bleak House as the classic 
died, you know, that stimulate thought about law and justice. And as uh, you know, Simon Lee says in his essay, um, uh, this particular essay that I have just uh, you know, mentioned, where he says that goodbye Austin, that is John Austin from the School of Jurisprudence, and hello Austin, goodbye Austin, hello Austin, Austin is uh, this Jane Austen from Pride and Prejudice, where you know, it seems that, you know, that law may you see for 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 a society's wider is in much of these literature of course but then it's a significance uh, it's it's importance it's a role you know it's pivotal role in shaping the psyche of the people that is you know very significant very relevant even as symbolic should not of course be allowed to escape the students notice the scholars uh, of uh, of literature the scholars of uh, uh, you know uh, law legal studies uh, they they would be able to perceive uh, you know law through all manner of uh, the uh, you know, forms of reception um, be it the cinematic uh, you know uh, form that is the cinema popular culture manner of media and television series they are so so important for the way in which law operates in practice and to acknowledge them and to take steps and to change law or practice uh, and to stand up for truth when cynicism is not justified so this is something that we we need to understand so far as you know visual culture so far as uh, uh, manner and reception of the media culture is important in understanding this particular mm -hmm. academic discipline which we call law and literature and different forms of you see legal and literary activities uh, therefore should become part of uh, the debate and discussion discussions under law and literature and you know see uh, see as i said in the beginning only that since the basic connection between the legal and literary interpretation is there uh, dependence on language and the immersion of law students in literature is of great benefit so students uh, the scholars uh, uh, the uh, the uh, people who are involved in the enterprise uh, uh, of giving momentum to the discipline of uh, law and uh, literature, you know, have realized basically, you know, this being steered in two important directions at least, and there is an, uh, of course, a clarion call to, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, towards uh, the scholars and the students for analyzing their inter practices in the light of uh, such classic diets uh, that we have talked about, the exemplary uh, visual text that we have. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, for example, I don't know if, uh, if uh, the scholars and the students have ever referred this beautiful film called, you know, 12 Angry Men by Sidney Lumet. 12 Angry Men, uh, you, you see this 12, there, there is a uh, there is an important statement that I would like to refer so far as uh, 12 Angry Men by Sidney Lumet is concerned. 12 Angry Men uh, is a 1957 film. And you see, this is a 1957 American courtroom drama. And this film adapted from a Terry play of the same name called Reginald Rose. So written and co-produced by the Rose himself and directed by... Uh, you know, by Sidney Lumet. This trial film is about a story of a jury made up by 12 men, you know, as they deliberate the guilt or acquittal of a defendant on the basis of reasonable doubt. Now, uh, now what you see, um, speaking at a screening of the film due during, in, uh, during uh, 2010 in Fordham University Law School Film Festival, the Supreme Court uh, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, he stated that the Strel Angry Man, it has been translated into many languages. We have a Japanese version, we have a Chinese version. It was uh, uh, translated even in Hindi, we have as Ek Rukahua Fasla, which was telecasted long back on the television also so many times. And, uh, you know, uh, this uh, Sonia Sotomayor, 
stated that seeing 12 angry men uh, while she was in college influenced her decision to pursue career in law. So that is how, you know, it has impact on the, on, 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 on the psyche of the people. So these uh, texts, uh, you know, these texts uh, and their study, they provide better ways, I would say, to explore the age-old questions as to whether there is a moral obligation to obey the law. Uh, we can always encourage the students, the scholars of law and literature to perform a few classics. For example, Antigone, taking a few creative leap and adapt the text to modern circumstances. Then again, there are so many important and good texts. So for example, you know, this... Uh, this Brian Fields play, The Freedom of the City. And similarly, a few important uh, texts, as I said, that I would like to share with the house that they can always be referred to elaborate it, the understanding, the momentum, which is required to associate with the understanding of law and literature, because there are so much as part of the human rights issues and concerns that can always be, you know, uh, providing um, uh, stuff to, to bridge the gulf, you know, that existing, that is there, um, uh, so far as the, you know, uh, this academic or the entire academic and divide towards uh, understanding of law and literature is concerned, as well as its, uh, you know, pragmatic aspects, the practice of law and literature. And uh, unlike, you know, uh, other movements in literature, this particular movement of law and literature is marked actually by a lack of coordination between the ideas and the tools of the movement which, uh, which can bring the social change. As Daniel J. Constein says that the greatest drawback, you know, uh, of, uh, of, of this, uh, this particular uh, relation that is often required to argue and take a proposition important not to meet with the failure of reaching and engaging the ordinary practicing lawyers and the and the students across so in the in the you know the two decades this area of law and literature has evolved from being an abstract idea to a contemporary skill of uh, of uh, legal uh, uh, you know legal consciousness, cultural consciousness, uh, and uh, it, it, is, uh, it can be seen as a broader, you know, pretext uh, to be, to find as an ever-expanding, you know, body of literature, which is probing, controversial, and fascinating too. So, uh, you know, reading and reflecting upon the characters and characterization from the uh, uh, from these exemplary texts as part of the uh, literature, as part of reception to media, television, and uh, and of course uh, films, cinema. We find that you know this world of uh, uh, <clears throat> literature and film, be it from Shakespeare, Kafka, or the versions, different versions of Hamlet we have as part of the visual text, they provide that there, there are the viewpoints that shall be invited to sense the, you know, the pride that is involved um, so far as the intricacies and the bond between the two, discipline, uh, two disciplines are concerned. So, and, and of course, the language perspective, being sensitive to the language that is there. So I would just, uh, you know, I would just uh, uh, wind up and, and conclude since it is time now, it is almost 12.30. And uh, I would say, you know, when you take up a text before you, uh, a text of sociology, a text of anthropology, a text of xerontology, a text of, uh, you know, a classic 
you know, you find everything as part of literature. You find everything as part of the language enterprise. You find so much concerns in relation to human rights issues that is in high volumes on the kind of the laws that we have in the society and the kind of uh, the psyche that we need to understand and to interpret text in the broader sense of the term, in different manifestations of the literature that we have in the society, to understand this more fertile ground, to ever expand in terms of understanding the relationship that exists between law and literature. So I would just wind up um, uh, via a poem that I, uh, you know, that you can always refer. It is, of course, uh, in these uh, uh, th this uh, age dominated by visual culture, internet, and digitization, everything is available on the net. Perhaps you'll be able to refer to this uh, W. H. Auden's poem. Uh, you know, in, in 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 understanding that how you know ambiguities in law, how the um, approaches and the way to interpret a legal text, uh, which. Uh, can be awesome if we, you know, can have or can provide vast windows and the vast doors to widen this uh, gap that, you know, this gulf uh, that is existing between law and literature. So Odin says that law says the judge as he looks down his nose speaking clearly and most severely Law is, as I have told you before, law is, as you know, I suppose, law is, <clears throat> but let me explain it once more. Law is the law, yet law abiding scholars write, law is neither wrong nor right, law is only crimes, punished by places and by times, law is the clothes mean where anything anywhere law is good morning and good night others say law is our fate others say law is our state law is no more law is no more law has gone away and always the loud angry crowd very angry very loud law is we law is we and always the other idiot softly me. Like love, I say, like love, we don't know where or why. Like love, we can't compel or fly. Like love, we often be. Like love, we seldom keep. So there is a, you know, there is so much of flexibility that we can always look to, to the, to, to change the behavioral patterns that shall structure the society and there will always be a pivotal and critical role of uh, literature as an all-encompassing discipline to, you know, to, to take those devoted versions that should be filled up enough to have a good and structured society with us. Uh, so greetings once again for the, this uh, important deliberation that uh, PG Department of English thought of deliberating on International Human Rights Day. Much obliged and much appreciation for the patience hearing of the scholars who have participated in listening to uh, this event. And of course, your feedback and questions are welcome. Thank you, Professor Das. Thank you, students. Thank you very much. Dr. Singh, we are overwhelmed with your scholarly and exciting lecture. It is something new for the students of this department. Uh, you have time to take a question or two. I know you are hard pressed, and our time was till I think you had uh, uh, kind of set the time up to 12 15. Now it's already half past 12. If you have time, I think the audience would like to ask you a question or two. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you very much. The, now the house is requested to put in their questions to Dr. Singh. Uh, Dr. Hello? Yes, ma'am? 
Yes, Pavitra, what was your question? Pavitra, what was your question? Hello. Hello. Yes, what was your question? Yes, ma'am, my question is that there is a line I quote, what did it matter? What did it matter if Bessel was accused of murder and then executed for not crying, not, not crying at his mother's funeral? Ma'am, I just want to say, uh, I just want to know uh, from the, uh, from a uh, ma'am. So, ma'am, can we say that uh, he has lost well to understand the emotion of the common people? Mm. Uh. Thank you for the question, of course. Uh, it is such an important yes. insight, you know, that we need to understand. It is not so. For instance, you see, uh, we have, you know, uh, discussed in the lecture today, this Jonathan uh, uh, is uh, Philadelphia, which was uh, based on the backdrop, uh, backdrop of the... Uh, uh, backdrop of the consciousness of how uh, a brilliant lawyer, you know, catering to the requirement of the people of course, all of a sudden is fired because of the sexual orientation and because of, uh, you know, because of uh, the, um, uh, the kind of a devastating disease he, uh, he, he, he uh, was into his suffering. And then uh, giving an entirely separate reason, he was fired out of the firm. But the way you say that law fails to understand, no, this is not absolutely true. But yes, there is uh, much more. There is an urge, you know, there is an urge to explore, as what you say in the beginning, that, you know, the modern perspective is also about being rational, being reasonable. But what kind of reasons do we require? That is very important. You know, the, you know one has to be cautious enough to, to understand that, you know, that the system, the establishment, the narratives, the individuals uh, must not uh, you know, fall into the pit of fallacious reasoning uh, you know, to, to speak of the propositions uh, uh, in the different syllogistic fold that is accustomed as a part of the textual understanding, as part of the you know, dispension of justice, as part of the just, as part of a correct understanding of one's psyche, one's mind, of course. So I won't say that the, the machinery entirely fails uh, in understanding the exact, you know, the consciousness or the the beliefs uh, that uh, that one has, but yes, it it of course, uh, uh, you know, this particular discipline, law and literature, open you see vast vistas of uh, possibilities and implications. Uh, that speak highly, uh, you know, of, of understanding humanitarian values, of understanding the, you know, of those values that a human is, a human being is, uh, you know, uh, enjoys by being virtue of uh, having one's life on earth. So not not a phase or the more, but since uh, you know, as 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 well is, is spoken. Uh, spoken of by John Galsworthy, you know, if you refer John Galsworthy, yes. uh, this beautiful play called Justice, you see uh, one of the, one of the, uh, you know, characters or the defending lawyer of the protagonist, as he says uh, that uh, justice is a machine that rolls on of itself once it is given a push and then ultimately yes. the protagonist uh, uh, you know, feel safer, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
family with the with the god in the in the lap of the god so yes we need that is what we we are talking about this this uh, you know this gulf that is there uh, there there between between the concerns of the human issues concerns of human existence concerns of the psyche because uh, you know law law uh, if uh, would operate mechanically you know then of course uh, the there would be devastation to the human condition but but yes we need to we need to give it momentum we need, there is an urge to explore these age old questions of as i said the the you know as i said uh, uh, so far as this uh, you know encouragement regarding the the moral values the human values are concerned yes thank you very much any other questions anyone else who wants to ask a question Dr. Singh, um, you had a very nice presentation. Congratulations for that. Uh, so uh, I have got a reference to a very famous American dramatist, Sam Shepard, um, who uh, you know, writer, writer, cinema maker, director, and all that. So in a, in a drama like uh, *Cast of the Starving Class*. We can find that everybody is fighting for his or her own right. You know, the husband, the wife, the children. Uh, but at the end, we found that the family is devastated, and uh, lawyers are there, and um, uh, cases are fought in the court. But uh, the human, the family peace is disturbed at the end, and nobody is aware of his or her own duty. So, what about that famous controversy that people remember the human, their rights, you know, they forget their duties. Sometimes uh, this this creates a big confusion in human mind how to lead life. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. so important. That that's so important. You see, uh, you know, it is important to study. You know, it is important to study the utilitarian approach, the Bentham concept of the utilitarianism. It is important to understand. You know, the justice approach. It is important to understand the individual's right approach. It is important to understand the relationship or the space that an individual and his or her emotional space is to be compromised in the wellness, you know, in the wellness, in the broader sense of the group or the system or the establishment. So these are the three, you know, different perspectives, different aspects. that that needs to be you know that needs to be addressed when we talk about uh, the dispensation of justice when we talk about you know the chaos as you have well pointed out that everybody is fighting for their own you know this is perhaps a kind of an, a deconstructive i'm sure most of the since it is uh, there have been many scholars and students uh, professor teachers from the Uh, with the background of Hindu studies, and you better understand that uh, after you know this post sixties, uh, this uh, this uh, you know this critical theory, literary theory, uh, the legal theories uh, that have exasperated almost the entire world of interpretation. And but then, as I said, then we need to understand you know this uh, this. Uh, three important aspect as i say that the utilitarian approach the justice approach uh, the uh, individuals justice to be compromised with the public at large with the system at large that is something which is and then how it alternate the experiences of our own from the stories of others so that's what i what what i can say you know, so far as these uh, texts as you have well pointed out to be taken for a more broad Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, Doctor Singh, there is a question by a student here. Is there any kind? May I read it out to you? Yeah. Is there any kind of emotion in the profession of a lawyer, as you said, in Philadelphia, uh, in in the character of Andrew Beckett in Philadelphia? Uh, yes, you see. Um, 
and you and you knew and you ever knew that he is suffering from a devastating disease of course aids and uh, it is it is also about the sexual now you see how the society has changed now we can say we, that honorable supreme court of india has welcomed the gestures to give a space to each and every one uh, everybody uh, every individual in the society we have a judgment now fair enough to enjoy the sexual orientation be it a gay lesbian or uh, you know the other other uh, uh, side other gender so we you know how the society is changing that is already there you know, the example is there before us we have now the final uh, supreme court uh, now never supreme court um, judgment with us now as to the emotional aspect of andrew beckett since you have specifically put up uh, the question on philadelphia so you see it is because andrew was emotionally great you know an intellectual like andrew beckett uh, uh, you know which is a reflection of course uh, of the human society in miniature and the working culture the workplaces that we have you know he has been fighting uh, for for fighting the right, fighting for the rights of others catering to the pains and sufferings of uh, others and such a brilliant lawyer have uh, you know he was fired on a pretext which was absolutely unacceptable for him so because he was emotionally delayed of course it is emotionally delayed that is why he could convince uh, you know joe miller for having a right case to represent in the court of law so that is also very important because uh, you know it is important to understand this emotional perspective so far as literature is concerned and as uh, you see as richard posner says in one of his uh, you know text that this is something you know that that cannot be ignored you know so far as the so far as uh, uh, in this this field of law and literature in the recent years uh, you know uh, have grown in fact this particular aspect this emotional perspective had have you know this this uh, this uh, they these perspectives have institutionalized and you know they have substantive reasons to to speak of uh, you know many uh, many perspective from the humanities into law and therefore they can be utilized as 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 uh, literature as law or literature in legal studies so that's about the receptivity of the you know academic uh, value of these texts Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, I kind of find a parallel between, or some kind of a similarity between Andrew Brickett and Hamlet. Do you think I am too far from the mark, or do you find some kind of similarity? Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, so true. Uh, you know, to speak of, you see. Uh, you know, Hamlet is a brilliant text. Hamlet, uh, if we, you know, I, I, um, I published a paper which I would share uh, with you, and uh, of course, uh, uh, ma'am, you can share, Professor Das can share with the with the, the students and the scholars over here, those who have attended, because we have a crunch of time now. Uh, now, but yes, uh, you know, I, I um, uh, elaborately wrote on Hamlet so far as this perspective of. Uh, law and literature is concerned because uh, you know uh, so in fact i compared the the this um, perspective of the wrong done to him you know after he decided to avenge his father's death and uh, there uh, but in the end what we happen what is happening in the end is the similar ending that we have in john gasworthy's justice so far as the case of william fader is concerned so the case of william fader is absolutely the same as we have the case of hamlet so you know uh, whether it is a wrong done uh, you know done by an individual or by a system uh, uh, so far as the entire it is it is important to look at the you know uh, process the the uh, the constituting you know actions uh, 
towards the interpretation of the entire, you know, uh, reasonableness behind the understanding of, uh, of, of humanitarian values uh, and, and the kind of the society we are looking forward to. So, uh, yes, as uh, Professor Das uh, has just pointed out that Hamlet is one such exemplary test. In fact, this has been uh, made into several, you know, cinematic versions. We have so much uh, cinema as in the form of, we have three important versions from Hollywood, so far as Hamlet is concerned. And we have uh, this... Uh, Heather as part of uh, this Bollywood movie recently, and because of you know they have this uh, this important uh, uh, I would say impact that explicitly open the areas of uh, law to deal uh, with literature that have gained you know increasing importance in the recent decades. So yes, uh, I would say there is so much that can always be you know provoked. To, uh, uh, to, to explore the urge to understand this important, uh, uh, you know, uh, important representation or the politicized representation of uh, the, uh, the, the, you know, the variables that need to be understood and bridge the gulf between law and literature. Thank you, ma'am. I have actually um, some judgments are brilliant and so scholarly and they refer to a lot of literary texts, philosophical texts. So, um, you're saying that we have to seek law and literature, and literature law is quite why that should inform our scholars and students here who will be doing the dissertation so they could explore this area. And thank you very much. Your talk was absolutely illuminating. I too long because it's nearly one o'clock. So, um, ma'am, I would request you to share your paper, which sounds very interesting. Please email it to me if you will. And please share a bibliography on love and literature so that I can share it with the students and the scholars of the department. And that should be really, really productive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank sir. you, Dr. Rao. Thank you, Dr. Singh. We have kept you long from the other appointment today. Wish you a very, very happy Human Rights Day. Same to you, Thank you. Thank you.